Hi everyone, I'm Carla. And I'm Lanes. And together, we're the Aft Deck. Where each week we recap an episode of Bravo's hit reality TV show, Below Deck. Hi everyone, this is Carla, just quickly popping into your feed to let you know as there's no Below Deck shows airing this week on TV, we're going to encore our most downloaded episode, which is Below Deck Season 10, Episode 14, Big Deck Energy. If you've heard it before, enjoy the ride again. We do apologize for the sound. This was our very first episode we recorded, and now that we know better, we do better. But I think you'll enjoy the content. See you next week. We're doing season 10, episode 14, Big Duck Energy. (laughs) Where do we kick off? Alyssa left. She's gone. She's gone. And we're kicking off with the pageant queens yeah. who are still on board. Yeah. It's their second day of charter. And we know in this ep- that Captain Lee is going to come back. Yeah. And our favourite captain of all time, Captain Sandy. She's, she's the best going. ever. She's going. So have you got your highlight of the ep, Lance? No, I don't know about highlight, but I just did. Well, I wanted to talk a little bit about the dietary requirements. Oh. Yes. I've not seen as many. Oh, there's been other episodes, obviously, but this season I haven't seen as many dietary requirements as these people. Yeah. And the only one that doesn't have a dietary requirement is the one paying for the whole trip. Exactly. The primary. It's like whatever. So low sugar, low carb, no dairy, no raw meat, gluten-free. What? Like. <laughs> Especially when you're on a yacht for two days. Yes. Is it really going to matter? And poor Rachel. Yeah. Who's also one of our favourites. She was doing the salads, the Caesar salads, I think, and she's getting the parmesan on top. And then all of a sudden they're looking at everyone's dietary requirements. And this one can go up to her. This one, Ben's looking at the photos and he's trying to get the food up properly to everybody. And then she turns around and it's... Fucking whore ass bitch. <laughs> that was my quote of the ep. Yes. I think it even had another fuck in there. It, yeah, there was a lot of beeps. Motherfucking whore of a whore ass bitch <laughs> when she gets her egg order. Loved it. <laughs> <laughs> With a few eat my cooters in there for the measure. <laughs> Back to the beginning of the ep. Yeah. The queens are on board. <laughs> the pageant queens. Mm. And the King of Queens, (laughs) who I just called the Queen throughout. We both know who we're talking about. I don't even know what his actual name is. I just kept calling him the Queen in my notes. Yeah, agree. So it's 80s night. Fraser seats them all to dinner and he's got this amazing tablescape, which he says is of beauty and fire. (laughs) And our Queen is just loving it. He's loving Fraser. The Queen loves Fraser. He's loving Fraser's ass. Yes. And he's calling him Fraser which Fraser hates with a passion. We go to Rachel and she tells us that she's making something with Worcestershire sauce. It's honestly a highlight because I love, on Instagram there's these things with like Worcestershire sauce and how people say it's so wrong all the time. And when she did that, and what did she say afterwards? She said, I can say it however the fuck I want because I'm the queen of the kitchen. <laughs> I knew you would have written that down. <laughs> she says Worcester. <laughs> yes, I said Worcester. But I think it's Worcester. Well, how, or is it Worcestershire? Worcestershire. I say Worcestershire. So Worcestershire. On, we're, we're all saying it wrong. Yeah, I think so. That guy on Instagram, I beg your pardon. <laughs> Did she just say Worcestershire, sister? Who's your sister? <laughs> so Sandy's worried about dragging anchor. In the wind. Oh, it's wind. All episode. That's all Sandy's worried about. She wind. stayed up all night. She's got no um, sleep. No sleep. No sleep and no staff to worry about, really. No. So she's just worried about the wind. So can we talk for a minute about Lakeish? Yes. So let me just. Not just a minute. We need more than a minute for her. Yeah. So let me just say that she's basically calling herself a tart because in French, 
quiche is feminine. So it's la quiche. And so she's calling herself la quiche. Yeah. Which is basically just a fucking tart. No, I did a quick side gig and really she's not that much. She's a bit of an entrepreneur, but nothing exciting. I thought I was going to find some gold. Um, but, but for what? Like, what's she entrepreneuring? Lots of different things. And she's using this whole blow deck yeah. experience to push. Is that why she was being so yes. much? Yes. So some of Lakeisha's requests, scissors. <laughs> She sits down for dinner, and what does she want? Scissors. <laughs> we never find out why. No. Does she use them? We don't know. She just asks for scissors. Then, coconut syrup. <laughs> That's right. Diet Coke. Turkey club sandwich, which she never eats. She never, she never ate it. And then they were just about to serve their meal not long after that yeah 30 minutes didn't Rachel say I'm I'm in the middle of dinner prep or she's doing lunch. dinner at lunch yeah, yeah I should stop drinking rosé when I watch this show pears on the side oh the pear yeah 24 karat gold on her steak and yogurt please right in front of me not over there right in front of me she couldn't get up she's not doing 10,000 steps a day all of those requests like the, her ridiculousness on the show she's now making merch What do you think her T-shirts say? Yes, her T-shirts say 24 karat gold steak. I'm that girl. All all the things that she said on the show, she's put on a shirt and she's selling them. What's something wrong with us, isn't there? Like we... Many things. We don't... (laughs) we, We try to hide our mistakes. Like she's making money off hers. And I'm sure people are buying it. Oh, hundreds of people will be buying it. Will people buy our merch? Yeah. I'll be wearing it. Yes. We can get free shirts for ourselves. Yeah. Great. Like, Cuda? <laughs> I don't think you can have Cuda without Eat My Cuda. Yeah. <laughs> Which Rachel says about Everyone. Lakeish after the pears, I think. And do you know also, like, when the pear thing happened – in my head, I would have just got the pear and put it in front of her. But Rachel cuts it up, yeah. does it really nice. I'm like, that's why that's why she's in her job and I'm in mine because I would have just got that pear <laughs> and put it in front of her, like the whole thing. I might have even wrapped it in alfoil and it, said, like I've run out of does. gold, have some foil. <laughs> Cling wrap. <laughs> to go, pear to go. <laughs> so they're sitting at dinner. And Lakeisha is going on with her crazy requests. And the primary, for some reason, we don't know why, gets a lap dance from the queen and a mm. chicken fillet falls out. <laughs> and the queen thinks it's a boob. Yeah. And it looks like a boob fillet. Yeah. And then she says, no, it's my butt fillet. <laughs> and I'm thinking. I don't need them. Do we really need butt fillets at the dinner? Do you really need to put in butt fillets to sit at a dinner table? If we were on St David, we wouldn't even get dressed for dinner. I mean, we'd be like in, in our togs. Yeah, yeah, we'd be like it's all good. If they were, you know, doing all their A plus serving, I'd be like it's fine. I can get it. But I guess we're not at that level. We're not. No. I've got enough, but I don't need. To I'm. Get- I'm pretty stacked. <laughs> We've both got enough butt. Oh, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. They have their dinner. Primary has the lap dance and then the 80s, 80s party starts. Yeah. And I'm loving the crew shorts. I'm all about the yes. little. I've got a comment about this. Yes. Fraser looks uncomfortable. In his shorts? No, just in the in the whole evening. I just was watching him and I was like, he's he's trying really hard to be engaged, but he looked uncomfortable. Yeah. It, there was just one point when everyone was coming in and they're like, yeah, and he's just like, mm-hmm. you know, he's trying, but it just didn't, it didn't work. Maybe also he wasn't like that. The queen was really laying on thick. Yeah. His love for Frasier. <laughs> and maybe he was just like, yeah, it's enough already. I'm not into you. Thanks, but no thanks. Yeah, completely. He was over it. He was just, he was only pulling off polite that night to me. Yeah. And I really like him. 
And it's hard when you're sober in a room full of really drunk people to to be up and not just be like, like if you're a regular bartender, you can just slam those drinks on the table and tell people to fuck off. Yeah. On a super yacht, you got to pretend. So maybe he was just over that. I think so. Mm. I did enjoy the blow up cell phone. Oh, yes. Did you see that? Yes. Yes. A very that was large really good. 80 cell phone. That I was, was like, excellent. That's good. I like that. Yeah, that was fun. Because those of us who grew up in the 80s remember those. It was phones? about that size. Yeah, it was. Took two hands to hold it. Yeah, heavy. <laughs> <laughs> They're just vacuuming after that. Yep. And then I've we're on. I've just got like 12 20, <clears throat> they're vacuuming. 3 a.m., they're vacuuming. Always vacuuming. Four o'clock, they're like me. Yes. Always vacuuming. So it's final day of charter. Tony's working out again. He's always working out. Or. Like the others are always vacuuming, he's always working out. He's either working out or he's in his cabin taking off his shirt. Mm-hmm. I think we see four shots of I Tony. I don't mind that. I don't mind it either. I'm fine with that. Taking off his shirt. Yeah. Or working out. He's probably got three lines in the entire episode. We should count, actually. <laughs> His work, Tony's word count. Yes, <laughs> Tony's word count. That's a good one. Uh, so it was minimal. Yeah, we're, we're <laughs> maybe at a sentence. But it's his word count would be quite high because, again, Katie and her assertiveness. Yes. She's like, Tony, do this. Tony, do that. Tony, do this. Tony, do that. And he's like, yep, yep, yep. There's his words. So it's Haley's birthday. Oh, Haley and her Jerry Halliwell moment. I loved it. She's really funny to me, and she would be someone that I would love to work with because she's always upbeat. Yeah. She's a good team player. Actually, I love her as well. And I think I struggled with my um, quote of the ep oh. because I really enjoyed it when she was on the phone. I'm jumping ahead. She was on the phone to her boyfriend, and she says, Oh, yes. I picked my bum today and my finger stinks. <laughs> but that that is excellent. I love how Haley is so open with yes. all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And she she farts and then phrases like, did you fart again? So she, this must be something that she does all the time. Yes. Obviously, we all do. Yes. Just, well, not you and I, but other people. Yes. Yeah, so it's her birthday and I think the crew give her, like, an awesome celebration. I'd be happy with that. Same. The Brilliant Cake, which, if you haven't seen the episode, is basically Haley's face superimposed on a cake with this crazy red hair and a foghorn to go next to it, which is just like, I was like, that's such a thoughtful, yeah, funny, awesome thing to do for someone. Like, he knows her really well. Yeah, yeah. and I also um, really enjoyed Sandy, Captain Sandy. I shouldn't say Sandy. Oops. Yeah. It's Captain now. That's insubordination. Captain Sandy came up and she did a really delightful happy birthday for Haley. Yeah, she did. That was really sweet. Yeah. The other thing about Captain Sandy that I've noticed is that she frequently tells her staff, I love you. Yes. And I was like, I don't think I've ever had a boss say those words, I love you. No, I haven't. I haven't. And she, But she says it in such a nice, sincere awesome way where I'd just be like, oh, my God, I love you too, Sandy. Yes. I do, actually, I do remember a one boss did say I love you to me, but that's because we're now friends. It wasn't when we were working. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you'd never, yeah, it's this In a workplace, of, it hasn't been said. No, but I wonder, does she say it to everyone or is it just when she sees them, when they've had that moment where she schools them in such a nice way and then she sees them overcome the obstacle Mm. and rise up and reset as she likes to say I love it and that's when she reserves the I love you yeah and I also think that being on doing their jobs and they're like a family so as the head of the family that's a really nice thing to do for your staff Mm. and for your team and you would feel like you would be missing home, you would be missing yeah. your, your friends and all those sorts of things, and she does really bring that emotional connection for her staff. It's really nice. Yeah. But we love her. We love her. And she also in this app gets to dock like a badass bitch. Yeah. How's it cut to the, the little boat that's like, God help me, all the time? It cuts oh. like two or three times. I miss that. To this boat, and it's just got written on it, God help me. But she did really well.
If you'd like to support us, go to the link in the show notes and buy us a coffee or subscribe. It's a small donation that goes towards helping us cover the costs to make our podcast. And then they all sit down and have a bit of a comboya, 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 comboya. How do you say that? What are you trying Com- to say? Comboya. <laughs> comboya. <laughs> um, com- comboya. Comboya. <laughs> God, that was really hard. They had this kumbaya moment with Captain yeah. Sandy when they're all sitting around and she says she's leaving. Everyone... Well, she cries. You know what else I love about her? She cries a lot. Same. And <laughs> she's such a, I don't know what the word is, like she's a beautiful crier or she's at like a restrained crier. Yes. When I cry, my whole face crunches. Oh. And it's not nice. Well, you've seen me cry. <laughs> <laughs> Multiple times. Yes. But she's, well, I mean, we could do a whole episode on Sandy. We could. And our love for her. Um, but she's very good with her words. She means what she says and she's just an excellent leader. She's fair. She's a hard worker. She's acknowledging of her team when they are good and bad, you know, like she's always there. Yeah. And I, I also enjoyed how when they were sitting around having that like final meeting, they all talked about without talking about she who must not be named. Like they were all saying how great the charter was, but yes. no one said, yeah, it's because Alyssa's gone. I but she was a bad egg. But everyone knew her energy. Yeah. It was big, big I mean, Camille, energy. I know we're going back to previous episodes now, but Camille, she was lazy. She was lazy. Yeah. She didn't work hard at all. But Alyssa was the problem. Yes. I mean, it's fine. Camille should have gone too, yeah. but Alyssa was the problem and yes. I knew it. And Camille might not have had to leave if Alyssa wasn't there. She still didn't work as hard as the others. And I've just completely forgotten the new guy's name. Curly hair, uh, South African, Stu. Tyler. Tyler. He's good. He's, uh, he could come and work for me any day. He can make my bed anytime he wants. He can fold my towels. He can clean my bathroom. <laughs> He's a great Stu. Yes. And this is a good segue lead on to the next part of this episode where, where we meet the new stew. We do. And David immediately realises as soon as she's on the dock that he... Ben. Ben! (laughs) Ben. Why am I calling him David? Um, Because they all have St David shirts on, so you would have just gone, David. Do you know what? Ben (laughs) realises he knows her from the gram, Mm -hmm. and I'm sure you've got something to say about this. All the kids these days are sending nudes. It's disgusting and everyone should stop doing it. How do you send nudes to someone you've never physically met? Never. She even flings through her phone. She's like going through her phone. She's like, this is how our conversations, this is how many conversations we've had. And it goes on. It's like a scroll. Yeah. It goes on for ages. So they've obviously had a lot of back and forth, which is, that's fine. But why are you sending your boobs, your fanny, or your dick. Like, why are you doing that? Unless you've met someone in person, don't send them your tit pics. Oh, my God. And even then, if you break up with that person, you know where those tit pics are going to end up. Just don't do it. Ever. Ever. Opposite to what Moira Rose says. Who's Moira Rose? (laughs) Shit's great. Okay. I need to watch that. You do. So the new stew is from Cape Town, which I think is also where Tyler's from. Probably. And she looks like she's going to be high energy. She's definitely going to try and get in the sack with Ben. A hundred percent. She wants what she wants and she's openly said that. And while she's reading out the messages from Ben Mm. to production, Mm. what do you think is in the message that she doesn't say? So she's she's scrolling through and she says, so Ben said to me, I think we both have similar passions in the bedroom. I love, I reckon, dot, dot, dot. I reckon it is, I love going down on women. What do you think Ben said to her? I think that you're right. Because I feel like I heard a gu- when okay. she cut off. I love gu- like that. I think you're right. It's either that or anal. Wow. 
Oh, I didn't even go there. <laughs> I mean, is that something that what you else write? Could it be? But you wouldn't tell a woman you love anal. No, like she's a- him going, him having sex with her up the ass. Yeah, but it's not everyone's bag. So would you write that if you were trying to like Graham court a woman? Graham court, new <laughs> word. We've had a lot of new words. <laughs> would you talk about how much you loved anal, and would you keep that a bit of a secret for later, <laughs> like in the back door? Yeah. Um, okay. Well, then it's going down on a. How will we find this out? Stay tuned. Can we text Ben? Can we can we get onto Ben's gram? Well, I mean, <gasps> I'm going to direct message him. Yeah, we are Australian. Yes, and so is Ben. Yeah, actually, let's get him on the show. Oh my god, Ben! He's one of my favourite crew members. Actually, Same. he's a lovely man, attractive, First Nations kind person. Yep, love him. Let's yeah. get him on and let's ask him, Ben, what did you say? Like, hey, why would he tell a couple of middle-aged women <laughs> what he said on Instagram to, we can't, we don't even remember just, her name. Uh, Leanne, <laughs> just a bit of fun. Let's it, find out anyway. You DM him. Yeah, I'm going to, I'll be in touch, Ben. And stay tuned, yep. uh, listeners, and we'll let you know. So let's just talk about Fraser knowing when he was gay. Mm. Hayley was also talking about this as well. She was saying yes. she didn't mind. She thought she was gay at one point, which I just it's so funny. So Hayley. Is that when she loved Jerry Halliwell? Yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it is. I loved how she says, you know, you don't realise how much I loved her. If I knew where she lived, I'd go sit in her garden. And I was like, I get it. Yes. I know exactly how much she loved her, just with that one line of description. It's perfect. Yeah. So Fraser then talks about his erectile dysfunction. In fact, he says that one time he flopped his penis on top of a vagina, just tap, tapped it on the top <laughs> in an attempt to have sex with a woman. And that was kind of when in his head he went, I think I need to stop pretending. Yeah. Uh, it ain't working. And thinking he had to have sex with a woman, in, he was in Sydney. Yeah. Do you remember him talking about that? Yes. And he was stressing out about it because he didn't want to. Yeah. And then she got stung by a blue bottle on her neck. Yeah. <laughs> which meant he got out of it. Now, how awful to feel like that, like not to get really, you know, deep and emotional, but how awful to be feeling Thank God she got stung by a blue bottle, so I don't have to do that. Yes, definitely. And then he also says, I think vaginas are the devil. (laughs) Where my mind was going was that no one should ever have sex on the beach. It's it's just not a good place. Crumb sausage. (laughs) It hurt. Crumb sausage. Yeah. Did you just make that up or have you used that term before? I've used it before. For a sand-encrusted penis. Yes. My God. (laughs) I was going to say you just end up with either sand right up your crack yeah. or a crumb sausage, <laughs> now I can use that, Yes. or sand burn on your knees. There's no comfortable way no. to have sex on the beach. None. That's all. <laughs> so next week Captain Lee is riding the crew in his usual way. That's oh, my God, Captain put. Lee comes back and, side note, he doesn't look any better. No. He's still limping and he's still got his cane. Yeah. Like he's gingerly going onto that boat and I'm like, why? Mm. I think he's been working out quite a bit. I noticed his guns are a little bigger. Yeah, he has been working out. doesn't mean he can still walk. Captain Lee's back and uh, the crew are sucking up to him. Oh, my God. Cap's back. Cap's back. Cap's back. (laughs) And he's riding them hard and telling them to get their asses back to work. I mean, he's a different leader. Very. I don't want to be down on Captain Lee, but it's just because of our love for Sandy. Captain Lee is really good for his one-liners. Yes. We may get many, quote of the app from yes. Captain Lee. Yeah. And the charter guests that we've got coming next week are fucking obnoxious. Oh, my God. Even Captain Sandy said, this is going to be tricky. Yeah. This is going to be hard or whatever she said, but that was what she was implying. Next week is going to be really tough. And what we see is exactly that. Assholes. Yeah, we thought Laquiche was hard. Yeah, she's walking the park. I mean, she 
her exit from the boat was even walking <laughs> yes. around everywhere. Aimlessly wandering. <laughs> like, what is, where is Laquish going? What is Laquish doing? Who knows? So, yeah, we have these hideous charter guests and the new Stu and Ben. Oh, Camille's going to have to have a return here somewhere. It's going to happen. Production would make sure that this is juicy. There's got to be a, a love triangle. Oh. There's already been one with Alyssa. Oh, my God, Alyssa and Ross and Katie. And so, yep, so now this is going to be our next yeah. love triangle. Yeah. And Ben thinks, oh, what a random coincidence. So random. Mm. Good one, production. So we'll see how that plays out yes. in the next episode. And hopefully we see you as well. Bye for now. Bye. If you'd like to follow us on Insta, come over to theafdeck.pod. Or send us an email on theafdeckpod at gmail.com. We'd love to know what you think about the show and what you'd like us to cover for upcoming seasons. 